Welcome everyone to the L7C Podcast Content Tuesday edition. Today we are going to be talking about the Ohio State Buckeyes and their road through the month of November trying to get to that Big Ten Championship. Uh, right now we got the captain, Byron Mitchell with us. How are you doing today, sir? Hey, doing good. Happy Tuesday. Yesterday was Veterans Day, so first day back at work. So we doing good today. Okay, okay, all right. Well, Byron, Ohio State had a game this past week as we are marching towards the final games of November. We had Purdue at home, mm-hmm. and this was light work. It definitely was light work. Ohio State won 45-0. to zero. Will Howard, 21 for 26 for 260 yards, three touchdowns. He did have a rushing touchdown. He had zero turnovers this game, which is great. Quentin Judkins, 11 for 32 yards, no touchdowns. Uh, Travion Henderson, 6 for 85 yards, a touchdown. Jeremiah Smith, 6 for 87, a touchdown. Emeka Buka, 1 for 10, a touchdown. D. Scott caught a touchdown as well. Defense had four sacks, uh, an interception by Lathan Ransom. Jack Sawyer did have a fumble recovery for a touchdown. The thing I like the most about the game is that Howard didn't turn the ball over. Hopefully he can keep that up for the rest of the season um, as we try to head back to the Big Ten championship this year. I um, also like how he spread the ball around. I know Mecca Buka only had one catch, but there are other receivers that were out there catching the ball as well. So I did like how uh, the offense spread the ball around this game. Yeah, like you said, because you've been calling these uh... – Will Howard turnovers? You have been <laughs> calling them. He didn't yeah. have he didn't have one, which is great. Uh, the defense got to get on the board with a touchdown. You almost thought it was like a perfect win in a sense that other players got to check in. Mm-hmm. No one got hurt, mm-hmm. and they put a goose egg up. We always love to see a, a goose egg, whether it's Purdue or any team. You always love to see a goose egg on the on the scoreboard. Yeah, because I think everyone scored. Jeremiah, uh, Becca, the only person that didn't score um, is Quinchon. But mm-hmm. Howard had scores. Henderson, Jeremiah, Abuka, or tight end G Scott. Because I was thinking it was after Abuka scored, where they're like, "All right, time to break, take everyone out." Yeah, he scored. I think the f- last touchdown to go up 45, and they were like, all right. And that was early in the fourth quarter, so like, all right, just pull the starters or uh, 45 nothing. <laughs> Jeez, Jeez Louise. But no, it's a good win. I mean, we got two big games left in November. Indiana, mm-hmm. obviously, and then finally trying to beat Michigan. Mm-hmm. We have a game. Go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say we have a pit stop before the two games, yep. Northwestern this weekend. Yeah, we're playing that at Wrigley Field. Yeah. I mean, my only advice for them is just don't look ahead to Indiana because Indiana is on a bye week mm-hmm. this week, so they'll be fully rested by the time they play us in two weeks. So just don't look ahead to Indiana. We need to win, win out. Um, so we can't afford to prep up at Northwestern. I just laugh that the year Indiana is really good. They get a bye week right before Ohio State. Mm-hmm. Like it was just in the cards for them. So, yeah. But Byron, man, there were some shakeups across the country. Like Georgia losing. I, I on the last podcast I said Georgia might lose because they've been struggling. They had a struggle game against Florida that they probably should have lost, but injuries fell Florida's way, so Georgia was able to come back and win. But they did not look good against Ole Miss. Lane Kiffin's probably biggest win ever of the season for sure. Yeah, like because no one expected it, but now Byron Georgia's at a they've already lost twice, which is. Mm-hmm. Wild to say for a Georgia team, but seven thirty ABC 
It's an elimination game again. Yes, it is. Georgia and Tennessee this weekend. Like, one of them's getting completely wiped off the map in terms of college football playoff. I think it's more eliminated game for Georgia because if they lose, they'll be five and three in the SEC. Mm-hmm. Tennessee, if they lose, they'll be five and two. Um, so I think it's a bigger eliminator game for Georgia, especially coming off that loss against Ole Miss. That's true. That's true. Because then just looking at the SEC, you got Texas, you got Texas A&M. Because mm-hmm. right A&M. now, looking at the SEC standings, Tennessee and A&M are the one and two team. Mm-hmm. Then who's three? Uh, Texas and then Georgia at four. Okay. Okay. Well, Texas is right. They're right there. I mean, because mm-hmm. it's just a matter of who's going to be in that damn SEC championship game. Like, who are going to be the two? They're still Texas. They'll have to play Texas A&M at the end of the year. Yeah. So that game will probably decide the second person. Mm-hmm. In the championship, if Georgia loses this game and Tennessee wins out, uh, oof, it's gonna be tough, man. It's gonna be, it is gonna be tough. Like Georgia's never been in this situation before, especially these past three years. No, they've been running the table against everybody. <laughs> <laughs> it's strange to see Georgia with two losses like that time Alabama had two losses. So like, wow, this is. Uncharted territory. <laughs> mm-hmm. And Alabama already got two losses. Tennessee mm-hmm. and Vanderbilt. Yep. Like, <laughs> but they survived their elimination game against LSU. I don't think they, they more than survived. They, I know. They destroyed <laughs> Right. LSU. Oh, had, man. They really let Jalen Miller run all over that. Man yeah. had 185 rushing yards and four touchdowns. And Bama, as a total, had 312 rushing yards. So, like, everybody was running over them, especially Millerall. I think Jaden had a big game against them last year, too. I'm, pre- yeah, I'm pretty sure. Because I think that's the game Jaden Daniels got hurt. Mm-hmm. But, like, he had a big game both years in a row. Like, yeah, now LSU, they're done. So. Yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> now Alabama's there. Just- there's a second loss in the conference, and they're six and three overall. So, yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. So they are out of the picture now. There was another upset too this weekend, Byron, with Miami. Miami was playing with dangerous money, man. They've had close games mm-hmm. for like the past month and a half, where. They're close in the fourth quarter, and then Miami just finally says, all right, let's stop playing with our food and just wins. But they couldn't get that magic against Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech. Georgia. And like you said, they've been on a close game watch every week for the past couple mm-hmm. weeks. Mm-hmm. And they They're kept like, all right, this around. might be the game that Miami loses. And they're like, oh, okay, they won by two or three touchdowns. Okay. And, uh, man. I was not shoot. expecting Miami to lose against uh, Georgia Tech, which is crazy because Georgia Tech is the first one that took down Florida State, and then Florida State did not has not had a great year this year. And only got one win. Yeah, I don't remember. Who, I don't even remember what that was against. I, I don't either. I don't either. Hey, we got one of our guys at Cedric. How you doing today, sir? I'm here. <laughs> I made it. We were there talking about Miami taking that L this past weekend. Drop the Georgia Tech. That's wild. But <laughs> that shows you college football any week. November's four contenders. They lost. That's what it's about. Yeah. And now number one in the ACC, I think, is SMU. Yes. Yep, SMU. And then is, S- think- is SMU Pitt? No, Pitt lost. SMU, then probably Miami, then Pitt. 
Let's see. I don't know where Clemson falls, but Clemson Clemson wrote their own check goodbye. <laughs> Actually, Clemson is number two. So SMU, Clemson, Miami, Louisville. Mm-hmm. And Dabo, there's hope. Dabo. I don't know. It might there's end, hope for Dabo. It might end Saturday at 12. They play Pitt. They might they might there's get some... hope, Dabo. Dabo <laughs> gonna be praying. Dabo will be listen, Dabo went to church. He went to all the all the group meetings with the men's ministry. Right, he went to the youth group ministry. He went to all. Of them. He even showed up with the, some cookies and brownies to the women's ministry on Thursday. <laughs> oh shit! They got that game on ESPN, Clemson and Pitt. Cedric, what do you think about uh, Wayne Kiffman getting his biggest win ever against Georgia last week? Man, I'm so happy for Lane. He showed that he's not James Franklin. He is like, don't call me James Franklin the South no more. Y'all gonna y'all gonna put some respect in my name. I'm gonna get this dub. I'm gonna get Kirby. Kirby's gonna be hot. I know Carson Beck's head isn't in the game. Oh, he's yeah. thinking about that Avenger twin mm-hmm. and what they're gonna do for TikTok dances. He ain't thinking about scoring no tutties, not against us. So here we go. And it wasn't even like they played amazing offensively. They played a great game defensively, and that's what got it mm-hmm. done for them. Shoot, Kirby called one of his players stupid because they were dancing with the old Miss people. Wait, one of the Georgia players were? Yeah. Wow, I did not see that. That is hilarious. I mean, you know the old audience. If you can't beat them, join them. <laughs> like, oh, man. Cedric, Georgia, this is a predicament that we've never seen since starting this podcast. They already have two losses, and... They have an elimination game against Tennessee. They lose Tennessee this Saturday. Georgia will not be in the playoffs. That's wild. And I know it's Georgia, but they really starting to get that Alabama treatment right now because they got two losses. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And they're still in this picture. Mm-hmm. Like they getting that good SEC Alabama treatment. I hope they live it up, man. They better soak good up. They better make good on this. They need to win. Oh, because Tennessee you out, man. Put them down. They might I'll put say them you down. out. <laughs> If you out three losses, you can't be helped. There's nothing mm-hmm. we can do for you. Mm-mm. Because mm-hmm. I don't even think. Wait, do they still are they still um, in it for the SEC championship? Currently, no, they are. I would just look at this too. Give me a second. Because you know, there's just mayhem and mischief over there. So. Mm-hmm. Currently, uh, the top two teams in the SEC are Tennessee, Texas A&M. Texas is three, and then Georgia is four. So if Georgia loses, they have no hopes of getting to that so SEC long. championship. Tennessee, well. Tennessee uh, got a winner. Texas about to jump them. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Saturday is going to be another one. It's going to – that it is – oh, it's in Athens? Oh, boy. Mm-hmm. Oh man, just backtracking, Cedric. What do you think of the Buckeyes' uh, shutout game? I'm gonna be honest. It was a good game, but I mean, it's Purdue. <laughs> like, no offense to Purdue, but you guys haven't really been performing well this season. So, I think it's a great way to bounce back because we still got business to finish. Because, like. Even though it's Northwestern, Northwestern's this Northwestern team has played okay, okay mm-hmm. against everyone else, and we still got that that team up north to finish it out. Yep, we got finished strong. So don't let this Purdue win go to your head just because you blanked them because it's Purdue. They were fucking won one game. Mm-hmm. This is what we're supposed to do. Our recruits are better than you. Like that's what's supposed to happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But still, business as usual. Way to take care of it. Agreed. Agreed. Um, and then right now, a people, which is kind of crazy, Oregon one, Ohio State two, Penn State four, Indiana five. Like this is wild. Who would have thought the number five team in the country, Indiana? No, I never. Not like looking at the schedule beginning of this year, I never thought that Indiana would be a contender in the Big Ten. I thought like you know your usual Oregon, Ohio State, Michigan, maybe Penn State, but Indiana, man, wild. I mean, the only one who's not in the Big Ten that's in the top five is Texas at three. Yeah. You know, I forgot we still got to play Indiana. I'm sorry, Indiana. Mm-hmm. I didn't put no respect on your name. Yeah, y'all hurdle too. We got to beat y'all too. Yep. Um, and just the way you talked about church, 
the way the gods aligned it, Indiana, no one knew they were going to be this good. And of course, they get a bye week before the Ohio State game. That's how you do it right there. That's <laughs> how you do it right there. They knew. They're like, hey, we're going to need all of God's worship here. So they're, they're going to be coming to Columbus. And that's in two weeks' time. That's right before Michigan, too. So once we get out of this Northwestern game on Wrig- in Wrigley Field, it's the two biggest games left to yeah. make it to the Big Ten. To make it to the Big Ten Championship game. All uh, right, Day, let's try not to choke. Oh. <laughs> I mean, whoever wins the Indiana game is going to the Big Ten Championship, plain and simple. Yeah. And Oregon, kind of, they're, they're not losing. It's kind of crazy because sure, Indiana can... Go ahead. Do y'all think... Well, go ahead because mine's about the hypothetical. I mean, I was just going to say, realistically, Indiana can afford one loss. We can't afford to lose this game. Nope. Mm-mm. We already have it now. So, mm-hmm. that, and that leads me to my question. What do you think happens to us if we lose the Big Ten Championship game? Oh, no, <laughs> because Oregon? we would have lost the, the same team twice. Um, shit. I think, we just, mm-hmm. I think we would still be in the playoffs. I just don't think we'll be the fifth seed, which then it's that's becoming bad yeah. news bears. Yeah, I feel like we'll be like eight to twelve somewhere around there. So we going on the road? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, rightfully so. I mean, <laughs> shit. I can't the... be mad with them. They say, "Listen, man, y'all don't lost the same motherfuckers twice. Y'all got y'all got to drive or fly." It's probably gonna be on the road to one of them down south teams. Mm. It might be good. it might be us in Alabama first round. Jesus, fuck like it, it was in the first playoffs, the 2014. Hey, hey fuck <laughs> it. At this point, I can't be mad. Like I said, I can't be mad at them. We we lost. We should be happy. We still there. Shit. Thanks. <laughs> Man, Oregon, they got Wisconsin um, this, pa- this Saturday coming up. Uh, LSU got Florida. Texas has Arkansas. It's unlike <laughs> Man. Woo. Woo. Nebraska has USC, Utah, Colorado, and Colorado's really in the mix. They are. I only they think the, the Big mix. Twelve. I think the Big Twelve is only going to get one team, and it's their conference champion. If yep. they're in the mix, I mean, right now the com- I mean, it'd be BYU versus Colorado. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, BYU versus Colorado. Yeah, whoever wins that goes. BYU to the BYU almost lost to Utah. Yeah, but it is a rivalry game. Holy war. That's true. I was, yep. I was gonna say, hey, Utah, don't play right against them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's all they had left this year. And Shed, <laughs> you saw their, you saw their uh, head honcho. They said we got cheated. We got the game stolen from us. Mm-hmm. Oh, excuse me. Oh yeah. I'm sorry. Oh no. He was hot. <laughs> no, we got. Oh, hold on. So let me scoot up. Hold on. We got cheated. Please tell me more. Yeah, let me let me get this for y'all. Like, yeah, the Utah person said they got cheated. Man, you know what's cheating? The fact that Cam Rising can play another year of college football. That's cheating. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, yeah, it was the AD. Oh, AD? oh that man. He said that the man don't understand. <laughs> let me not understand the rules. <laughs> he said the refs cheated so that you uh BYU could stay undefeated. Oh, okay. Wow. Guy. Listen, blame you, the refs. I'm just saying, you want someone to blame? Blame Cam Rising. <laughs> yeah. At this point, yeah. this is like the second season of the whole hypothetical. Well, if Cam Rising was healthy, we would be amazing. Well, guess what? He's you know, talk about medical pressure to him again because he can't stay healthy. I mean, that's just football, bro. Like I don't know what to tell you. Hmm. I hate to quote him, but you know, there's a there's a guy out there to be saying, man, don't leave it to the refs, man. And at that point in time, I mean, hey, don't leave it to the refs. They owe you yeah. shit. Yeah. Yeah. Let me look at this a... story. He's disgusted. Mm-hmm. He used the word at the frantic, frantic BYU ro- rally. Wow. These are very choice words. I wonder <laughs> if someone proofread this before he started talking. Probably not. He was hot, bro. Hot. Is there a fine? Please tell me their program. No, he got fired. He's getting fined. Yeah, you can't you can't talk about well, you don't about get to just talk about the refs out here and not get fined. Like, please tell me right. someone's getting fined. Oh no, bro, he got fined 40k. Dang. <laughs> he got fined a 40k ball. Hope it was worth it. 
No, because it didn't change anything. They still lost. Like <laughs> he's like, yeah, like it's, it's I mean, undefeated. You said all this, sure, great, all right. They, it's probably you're probably not gonna see the same reference crew because guess what, your season's done. So <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> good job, good job complaining. We'll give it a grand thumbs ups. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now I'm about to listen to this man really said stolen from us as if like you're entitled to some shit. <laughs> hey. How are you gonna get up on this presser? Where I wonder if anyone asked about Cam Rice. <laughs> hey, Utah, I'll never forget when y'all took out USC for us to get us into the playoffs. I'll never forget that though. Never forget. <laughs> That team's in a dumpster of shit. Yeah, that was nice. We appreciate y'all. Wow. Like, who do you think is going to win this Nebraska-USC? Uh, I mean, it all depends game. on what type of dumpster you're thinking of. Uh, I mean, <laughs> who do I think should win or who is going to win? Who do you think is going to win? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, because those are two I different answers. U- I think it's at USC. I mean, I'm always rooting for Nebraska. I'm runs. Of, I'm playing. I'm here for the runs the ball. Like, let's play some runs the ball. They got a tough defensive front. They got a true freshman quarterback who's not bad. He's still developing. He gets better week by week mm-hmm. as he's learning some shit. Nebraska is five and four. USC is four and five. Man, oh no! No, oh, there you there, go. There it is. Okay. Maybe, maybe my computer was doing too much because I had the video and audio. It's not used to that. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, we're working too hard. We're working too hard. Yep. So, again, Nebraska 5-4, and four, USC 4-5. Four and five. Um, Guys, we're running into a thing where USC needs to win to just be bowl eligible. I mean, that sounds like a USC problem. That definitely sounds like a USC problem. Nebraska, Nebraska uh, does, too. We need to get six wins. Well, six Martin, four. let's be real. You would love if they're not bowl eligible. Oh, it'd be hell on earth. That, they're, they're just, <laughs> no, you would love if it would not be bowl eligible. If they aren't bowl eligible. Don't front. You already know you would. That's just embarrassing. Even when I used to get on fucking... Um, Fisher, at least they were taking the team to shitty bowl games. True. No, they're a nine point favorite. Damn. Uh, USC is? Mm hmm. Right. Mm. Wow. Shit, I have saying a 30 point favorite. Oh, wow. That's a lot of points. We were 38. I mean, I honestly bet the under. I thought we wouldn't cover, but then they proved me. Wrong and I lost money. So <laughs> the mm-hmm. defensive tutty and all of that. Anything, shit. anything's possible. <laughs> Man, I don't, I don't know if USC is going to go into a bowl game. They, Nebraska comes to them. I, mean, I think they could be U UCLA. No offense to USC LA fans out there, but I don't think they beat Notre Dame the last game of the season. You think they beat UCLA? I think they could. Man, I'm rolling with the Golden Bruins. I mean, it's not basketball, but shit, fuck them. Uh, <laughs> like I, said, I don't trust. I don't. I do not trust the USC. I just don't. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I'll be glad to be wrong. I hope they prove me wrong. I hope they make it to a bowl game. I mean, I think they'll get annihilated whatever bowl game they get to, but I hope they make it. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see. Byron, who's your performance of the week? Uh, my performer of the week is I'm going to go with Quinn Ewers. Went 19 for 27, 333 yards, and five touchdowns. So simple, Cedric. Oh, you caught me slipping. (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to go Jalen Milrow. Yeah, Jalen Milrow, four rushing tutties, 185 yards rushing the ball. Is just ridiculous. Like, dude ran for a seventy-two yard touchdown. He had two. He both. He busted out like two long runs on them mm-hmm. for touchdowns. It was insane. Uh, I'm gonna take. I'm gonna take Ohio State's defense. Ever okay. since that Nebraska game, they have not given up an offensive touchdown. 
Okay. Which is wild to that's to think about. They haven't given up an offensive touchdown. So I'm gonna give it, I'm gonna give it to them. Um, as now it is 8 30 time of recording. So we are now patiently waiting for college football playoff ranking that should be starting right now. But this thing came up today and it's caught up a lot of steam. Big noon kickoff. So as you guys know, Ohio State is playing at noon the rest of the season. So that's six straight games at noon. And mm-hmm. OSU fans are fed up. They said with big noon kickoff, it's the fact that Ohio State has to carry the 12 o'clock time where they don't get to show their college atmosphere like at the 3.30. Like the fact that Indiana is going to be a 2 versus 5 and it's going to be a 12 again. People are getting hot about it, man. I get it. I don't. That, like, just for the college football atmosphere, like, that Penn State game definitely would have had a better atmosphere if it was Penn State at night with the whiteout, um, like they tradition, like, traditionally like to do against us when they play Ohio State. Again, Indiana probably have a better atmosphere if it was a prime time game, but Big Ten signed an agreement with Fox mm-hmm. that we'll get the big noon kickoff game. Yeah, Ohio. It's the fact too that the really thing that pushed it over the edge was this past game where Joe Clad and Gus Johnson are their A team, and mm-hmm. they had no energy for that game. So why the fuck did you even put them on that game? Yeah, Gus Johnson, like, there are a couple touchdown calls. I'm like, yeah, this buddy's not <laughs> in the game right now. And I get it. It's Purdue, but you shouldn't have your A team doing this game then. Right. And, you know, Joe Clatt, he was defending big noon kickoff, saying they found a window, blah, blah, blah. Then people answering back, like, you picked Ohio State and Michigan, the two biggest, like, alumni fan bases. Like, it don't matter. Ohio State could play at 11.30 at night and motherfuckers will still watch it. hmm Without hesitation. So, because they've talked about it, and I, I had to think, like, I don't remember the last big 3.30 or 7.30 game in Columbus. I, I can't either. I, I, I don't know. I almost went back to Urban Meyer in Oklahoma. That, mm, yeah. So, this is the thing. When we talk about this college atmosphere, mm-hmm. and I'm here with the night games. I'm with you 110% on the night game. Because I really do think that that is a whole different type of atmosphere for college football, no matter where you play. Mm-hmm. I don't know about the three thirties, and the only reason I say it is, is if you think about noon, that's close to prime time football games because normally the NFL professionals play at one. Mm-hmm. Tailgating is a real thing at Ohio State. Mm-hmm. These people show up in droves. Now, mind you, they'll tailgate whatever time to whatever time. If you tell them the game's at night or the game's at three thirty, that is act. I would not sit here and deny that those people will not get drunk in a parking lot for several hours before the game. Mm-hmm. That being said, I think from noon to 3.30, if you're telling me what time I think I would expect to see more people at this game or in a more lively atmosphere, I would say noon. I would think that that campus is rocking at noon. That those students who live on there, the fans and everyone is coming together because you get there early in the fucking morning. Kegs and eggs for the tailgate. And you're at the peak of your buzz, the peak of your fandom, and it's right there. You're not waiting till 3 o'clock. You're not wait. It's like right there. Boom. We're first window. New. I would imagine that's when the most hype you would be for your program. I... I don't know if it's the matchups because, honestly, in comparison to games, I just don't think the stadium is rocking like it is. 
That's another yeah. thing. Like, and what is that? I'm trying to. So the last, and I think the problem too is like when we get to host a night game, it's against someone. No disrespect that no one wants to see. Yeah, yeah. we hosted one night game this year. It was against Western Michigan, mm-hmm. and we won fifty six to zero. Mm-hmm. I remember when it was first announced because it was on Peacock. We were like, "Why is Peacock showing this game?" Like, no offense to Western Michigan, but if I wanted to watch a night game, I wanted it to be a more exciting matchup. And the thing with the Oregon thing is the only reason I was at night is because Oregon was hosting. And it was mm-hmm. at night for us, but not for really them because of the mm-hmm. time difference. Mm-hmm. If they were coming to Columbus, that'd probably be at noon. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, it's just, uh, it's the fact to like, I don't know, like we don't get to like the fact that we don't get a big night game where all the other big wig teams get a big one or two night games during the season and we don't. And again, yeah. it's whatever Fox wants, but mm-hmm. all these at twelve, like we shouldn't have to carry big noon kickoff. Well, I guess and like, we, who and we also we get paid. Who also gets night. big noon? Like, well, no, I'm saying like, who else will we play at night? Because we're not playing Michigan at night. That's oh no, Michigan will. Game. Michigan will always be at twelve. So the only but, other teams is maybe Penn State, maybe maybe Wisconsin, maybe because mm-hmm. Oregon's what it depends on the. They're going to do that whatever slate of time that they think they're going to have the most viewers for the West Coast. Mm-hmm. Well, they said particularly for this year, like Penn State, Penn State should always be a night game because it's always around. It should always be a night game. Both it's sides. It's always around Halloween. Yep. They said for this instance, like if a team just shoots out of nowhere as a top five team, that should be it. Like Indiana, the winner of flex- that game, that winner of the game goes to the game. Big Ten. Yeah. They go to yeah. the Big Ten championship game. You don't get that much bigger than that. Right. So I just, oh. I guess, because you mentioned like the other teams that are having night games. The other teams that are having night games. The, the conference that has the most night games is the SEC. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, like people actually tune in and view like the SEC, like the Big 12 next because of the time slate, because where their schools are located at. But mm-hmm. if I'm talking like a school, a schools that have routine night games that like you can guarantee no matter someone's playing at night, whether it's LSU, whether it's Tennessee. Like someone, Arkansas, whether it's Texas a and someone's playing at night mm-hmm. in that conference. And it's, unfortunately, no offense to the Big Ten. I mean, granted, this is our first year with the big, like the extra schools in there. I imagine it'll probably taper out more evenly next year. But we can see the, how close it is in the SEC where it's a couple of those games are dropping every now and then, man, you don't know. Yeah, they even I asked mean, Ryan Day about it. I'm not looking for conference. Northwestern to upset. Us. I'll put like that. I'm not looking for <laughs> Northwestern to upset. Us. Like, I'm not looking for a Purdue to upset. I'm not looking for a UCLA to upset us. Like, mm-hmm. we thought USC would be able to carry that slate, but I'm not looking for Lincoln Riley to upset us now. Like, it's, yeah, not after this year. But I get. I mean, I. I mean. We should have more night games. Our games are exciting. Damn it. Yeah, I was just seeing some of the pictures from like the OSU crowds or the night. I'm like, man, it used to be like this. Yeah. People are actually those... excited. People actually staying for the whole damn game. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, I remember those like night games against like Wisconsin when Wisconsin was super good, or like mm-hmm. Michigan State when they were super good. Scarlet out the shoe. Damn. It'll mm-hmm. be dark as hell outside. Yeah, the whole place filled with scarlet, like. Mm-hmm. These are the blackouts, the whiteouts. Mm-hmm. I don't know, like a true college fandom. Now it's like, hey, you got a jersey or a sweater to show up. Right. <laughs> Just show up at 12 and then they'll leave by 1 30. Yeah, and then there'll camp- either be a blowout or <laughs> you just won't be interested anymore. Yeah. And mm-hmm. then the camera can't pan to that section because people are gone. Right. Yep. Because there's no, no interest. So. Yeah, because Ohio State, Michigan, and Penn State have been the ones having all these big noon kickoffs. Mm -hmm. So, and then if it's not us, it's Colorado. Yeah, this year. But how long is that Colorado thing going to last? It's true. Because once Dion decides, yeah, (laughs) if he decides to leave, then 
it's those big dude games they have just gonna go to Ohio State. Yeah. Mm. They'll find oh. another feeder school to do it. And also just for FYI, the game this week is on the Big Ten network. Yeah, because Colorado and Utah are big noon. Yep. Yes, sir. Yep, because they're big noon, and then the week after that, Indiana and then Michigan. Do you also think that we don't get night games because Fox doesn't want to compete with like ABC and ESPN? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Because again, look at the slates of who we be playing. Like, unless it's an Indiana that, well, at the time when they're picking these times, Mm -hmm. they don't know Indiana's going to be this good. Yep. True. They think it's going to be Michigan and Oregon and maybe USC, kind of. They're like, well, maybe if anyone else, USC. But we didn't play USC. We played mm-hmm. Oregon in Oregon. That was a night game because of Oregon. No. Nope. Again, Michigan's never going to be a night game. So mm-hmm. you got Penn State. I guess that's the only one I can hear the people on. Like Penn State should have been a night game. There was no reason not to make it a night game, really. Mm-hmm. So I hear I'm the think, What was a night game that week? It's probably an LSU game, in all honesty. So, what time do you think we're already projecting? So, what time do you think we're playing Texas next year? Because for people who don't know, Texas comes to Columbus next year. Oh, ooh. what mm. week do we play them? The first game, August thirtieth. That'll be a night game. Yeah. You think? Unless there's a better know, first week be... matchup. Unless there's a better first week matchup. Mm. And it won't be because we're Ohio State. It's because they're Texas. They're in the SEC. <laughs> I said we don't wake up for this 12 p.m. nonsense. No, just because <laughs> unless they have a better week one matchup, there's no reason not. And Texas is west enough where they'll catch those viewers late at night. They'll stay up to watch the game. They don't will fucking stay up to watch the game. You said it it's yourself. It's we'll Labor- stay up all night. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. Oh, yeah, it's Labor Day weekend too. Like Texas, shoot. Dude, Byron, I, I think the night game may have been. From the Penn State week was no, that was during that. That was uh, South Carolina. Texas. Yeah. I think it. I know ESPN had Louisville and Clemson as a night game. Was it Ole Miss and Arkansas? Oh, Ole Miss beat the dog shit out of Arkansas that night. So, I mean, they got their star-studded performance. Yeah, it's either Ole Miss and Arkansas or Clemson and Louisville because it just says ESPN Network doesn't say it was ABC or not. Well, they got their they got Ole Miss being the dog shit Arkansas, and that's when Double dropped to Louisville. So, yeah, <laughs> it's something, man. Hey, they said who's the? It's people are like who's the blame for this deal. They're like Kevin Warren. I was like, oh no. That's a name I haven't heard in forever. He's the one who I did the big he he's the one who did the Fox deal. Shit. I did ask for guy <laughs> he existed until you just said his name. I really did forget about him. Um Honestly, I don't know if we can blame him. I I, I honestly blame ESPN and S- the SEC. Because they made that partnership deal, and that's what screwed everyone up have these local networks fighting for these night games to find any game. He has been like, we'll give you this. I'm like, shit, we may have to take that, guys. It's just wild, bro. Before, like, these contracts and what they're on, Ohio State would be on any channel. Yeah, ABC. Fox, NBC East, when we're playing Notre Dame. ESPN. Now we just mm-hmm. CBS. That's, that's the most consistent channel we can be on. CBS. You mean, you, mean you mean five? We haven't even played on. We only played on CBS one game this year. It's mostly Fox. Oh, yeah, man, that's disrespectful. Even CBS don't want us, bro. That's what I'm saying. If they're the ones who put in money this year. Like, what are they getting out of this? Well, you're <laughs> seeing it. The players in the big new kick. <laughs> Yeah, because we do have a con. The Big Ten has a contract with C- CBS. I think they got like a Michigan. Was CBS. Michigan USC? USC CBS. So the only game 
CBS got was the very first game against Akron. Enjoy. No, that's Buns. <laughs> no offense, Akron. <laughs> that's a Buns deal. If I'm yeah. CBS, I'm upset. I'm like, that's what was left. I didn't pick that game. That's what was left. Mm-hmm. No, they got another. They got two. They got two. They got the Iowa game. Oh, okay. I that's okay. Buns too. <laughs> no, if it's to Iowa. <laughs> We're not talking about Buns is in your team, Iowa and Nack. We're talking about Buns is in like no one's really gonna watch that game that long. Like right. Mm-hmm. 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 And both CBS games were three thirty. Okay. It's the fact Western Michigan was seven thirty at the shoe. Like what the hell? Hey, that's a for sure dub at home though. Yeah, it's like I wanted a night game. Here you go. <laughs> that's pretty. <laughs> ah, that's pretty much what it. They were scared of them kids, man. I'm telling you, man. Those Is campus it... rides are coming back. If they were to lost, if they were to lost that game, the Western Michigan couch was on fire. Everywhere couch was on fire. Next. Oh, it's 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 something else, man. Like, but hey, when we get to the playoffs, you know that shit will be must see TV. So, because the playoffs are just held by the... they're just held by ESPN. Oh yeah, true. I was gonna say I don't know if one of those will be a big name kickoff. <laughs> That's crazy. Hmm. And that, that would um, be insane. Well, I wonder what time the Big Ten champion. I mean, that game's usually a later game. Yeah, it's usually a night game on Fox, I think. Mm-hmm. Well, we can dream. We can dream. Hopefully it happens. Yeah. Um, if it doesn't, well, damn. <laughs> <laughs> I just want the world to see that we could get rocking over there to shoe. Mm-hmm. Well, then you better start paying them fans to get drunk at the shoot. They ask a lot of those fans. I'm not gonna lie. I mean, they ask a have... lot. What, what? What do you mean to be excited about your team on no, live no. television? No, that's good. But it's like, hey, if those fans are coming in excited, don't be trying to ask them. Like, hey, you want to donate some nil to the players? <laughs> hey, shoot! It works in the south. Them people pull out the pipe. How much you want? I, I got fifty dollars cash right now. Is that good for you? <laughs> like that's true. <laughs> that's true. What do y'all think about Ohio State's currently? I mean, we haven't even decided for the Big Ten championship, and currently they're the favorite to win the Big Ten and the national title. Who? Ohio State. Oh, okay. We just still got. We still got to play, man. Yeah. <laughs> That's a great way to say. Uh, we'll see. <laughs> Honestly, right. until we beat Oregon, hey, I mean, if we can say all the shit, that's great. Great. Right. I don't. I don't know. I still don't know if this like because that wasn't even like a we played terrible type of game. Like we played, yeah, and they played, yeah, and it just mm-hmm. came down to some decision making skills. That whatever atmosphere can affect those, like. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know. This is a very optimistic read, though. I hope we can be the best team in the Big Ten. I really want I, that buy. I'm not going to lie. I really want the buy. I would love the buy. Granted, buys haven't really been, like, extremely helpful because for some reason after buys, we play, like, butt. <laughs> So I don't know. Maybe losing will help us. Maybe having to play every single week and practice every single week does us good. I, I don't know. Mm, yeah, you might be right, Cedric. Because we did not start off well after a bye week, which is insane to me. No. Straight, straight trash. Straight trash. Uh, as we're still waiting for the playoff rankings, Byron, who's your winner for the week? I only got one winner. 
I'm mm-hmm. going to go with Mr. Jamar Chase uh, for that Thursday night football game against the Ravens. He had 11 receptions for 264 yards and three touchdowns. He uh, tried to put the team on the, their back, but they end up losing to the Ravens because of some terrible uh, last-minute play calling. But Jamar Chase, he did good. Okay, good winner. Cedric? Ma'am. Honestly, I'm going to say Lamar Jackson. Mm. Lamar Jackson, and I'll say this because normally we see a mixture of him getting it done with his legs and throwing the ball. When they played Mm. Denver, 41, 10 points, he threw three passing tutties, 280 yards, 16 for 19, only missed three passes. I think for all the people who I feel as though this is a broken record now, I don't know how many times he has to show you that he's not. He's not just a running quarterback. He can actually throw the rock, too. But that's another example of the people who say, like, oh, he's just a, a running back at a quarterback position. It's like, no, look at those numbers, man. I think he only had, like, four rushing yards. And he put it on him with three passing tutties. So he can get it done through the air, too. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, any other winners, Cedric? No, I'm not going to say the Eagles because Jalen Hurts is Jalen Hurts is a goal goal line touchdown hawk and stole all those from Saquon, and I didn't get a Saquon <laughs> tutty this week, and I really do blame Nick Sirianni, and we got very lucky that Cooper Rush can't hold on to the football. So, you know, I will I'll give a shot to the Eagles defense, the defensive line, great job, guys, way to get to them. Okay, we'll okay. see if this lasts until Thursday because I think you guys are going to get your shit rocked, but that's okay. We got Thursday. We got the Commanders Thursday. Oh yeah, that's a big game. Yep, yep. Yeah, I may try yeah. to go to that game just to okay. feel the disappointment in person. Just soak it all in. <laughs> um, man, I don't. Winners? No, I'm gonna be. I'll be woozy for my winner this time. Uh, my winner today, Ludwig Kaiser. If you don't know mm-hmm. who he is. He's part of him. Well, I don't even know if they're Imperium anymore. It's just him and Gunter. But they really are woozy. <laughs> and you're like, why? Why is this person your winner? Because Ludwig Kaiser is dating, and his girlfriend is Tiffany Stratton. Just type in her name, and you'll be like, yep, yeah, he's a winner. He's a woozy winner, but I get it. <laughs> I'm weak. And after today, I was like, yep, Ludwig's going to be my winner. I'm really weak. Man. This dude really just said, "Wow." <laughs> oh, Byron, who's who's your losers? Oh, I got two different losers. Uh, okay. the first loser, the Portland Trailblazers, uh, oh. lost to Memphis Grizzlies on Saturday by 45 points. Mm-hmm. Their Grizzlies were without Ja Morant. Mm-hmm. Portland maybe could have made it closer if they didn't go four for 42 from the three point line. Mm-hmm. Um, at no point did they say, maybe we should stop packing up threes. Um, that's just terrible. Going four for 42 from three point is just ass. It's just big ass. So, Portland, maybe stop doing that. Uh, my second loser, uh, I set this team last week and thought they were turning around. Uh, Houston Texans. No way y'all picked off golf five times and still end up losing. Uh, 26 to 23, I think was the final score. You're up 20 37 at halftime, and then you let them score 19 um, in the third and fourth quarter, and y'all can score at least once in the second half. Um, I know y'all play the Cowboys this weekend. If y'all lose three in a row, y'all might be big ass as well. So. Houston Texans is my second loser. <laughs> Cedric? Well, speaking of them big-ass boys, <laughs> y'all really thought I was going to come on here after the week we beat them and not talk shit? Oh, absolutely <laughs> talking shit. I really hate them boys. I'm glad they lost. I knew they weren't expecting to win, but I'm happy that it was confirmed that they lost. Honestly, 
it's not even really the players. It's the organization right now. Jerry Jones, my guy, what is you doing out here, baby? Like you out here, but you're passing him. Cooper Rush, 45 yards. Trey Lance, 21 yards. Cooper Rush threw the ball 23 times. Mm-hmm. Average 3.5 yards per pass. That mm-hmm. is horrible. Horrible. Mm-hmm. Like, this is just, I don't really know what they do at this point. Like, I actually not do embrace the tank. Just embrace the tank. Like, poor CD Lamb, he got 10 targets, six receptions, only 21 yards. Your leading receiver was your tight end with 24 yards. Just embrace the tank. It's over, baby. It's okay. Go get that first round, first four or five draft pick person. Try to turn this franchise around. Hopefully, sign Michael Parsons in the offseason. Personally, I hope you guys are stupid and you drop him. But sign Michael Parsons in the offseason and try to turn the ship around because right now it's done. The season's done. It's scrap. It's a wrap. Don't even, don't. Honestly, I'd be surprised if half of y'all show up to work on Sunday. And then I got to talk to to the refs and the Kansas City Chiefs. Oh my gosh. <laughs> And honestly, I'm calling. I don't give a damn if they won. I don't give a damn if they undefeated. I know there's something sick, man. There's some collusion. There's some collusion going on, bro. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I can't prove it. I have no evidence outside of results, but it doesn't smell right in Kansas City. It doesn't mm-hmm. look right. Like the things that happen, like that field goal block. Oh, That's it was wild. too fishy. It was too fishy, bro. Like, and you know the fact that people were trying to gas it up, saying Kansas City knew they were going to block that kick. What, bro? Stop. How do you know you're going to block the kick? It just stop happens. <laughs> no, honestly, they stocked. They stacked right next to the to the guard. I'm surprised. I honestly, I was waiting for multiple angles to slow it down. I'd be surprised if one of those dudes didn't hit the long snapper. There's like three people coming through that gap. Those are three big ass mm-hmm. human beings. Do you mm-hmm. want to tell me that none of them touched the long snapper? They were on the brink of losing to the Denver Broncos. Literally right there. And of course, fails. It's wild, bro. I think so, something's fishy. I don't like it. I don't trust it. So, for that reason alone, they're all on my list. And they get to play on Christmas. Huh. the Steelers. I hope they get cold. <laughs> <laughs> I've never really been. Well, I've been a Mike Tomlin fan because you know black man successful. But Mike Tomlin, I hope y'all. I hope y'all win, man. I really do. I well, can't take much more of this. Well, this week they play a Buffalo. I don't trust Joshy boy. I mean, I would <laughs> like to see Joshy. I just don't trust Joshy boy. You you instilled the doubt. Oh, I very know. well. You yeah, still the doubt. I know. I know. Why he, Cam Newton? He be struggling sometimes. Yeah, he consistent. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. But nah, man. Your thing with the Cowboys, Michael Parsons. I can't believe. They say he's everything that's wrong with the current athlete right now. This man, you get you got your ass whooped, and then you have your statement about your coach, and then you say, "Oh, if you want to hear more." Come listen on my podcast. You did, you're what? right. you right. Mm-hmm. What? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. It, who? I forget who I was talking with. Someone was, I was talking with someone the other day. It's like, oh, they won't get rid of Michael Parsons. They love him. I'm like, he is toxic in that locker room. I know there are people that hate him because of that stuff right there. He talks about the atmosphere. He talks about the, the, the locker room presence, the things that. The Dallas Cowboys don't want to know. You don't want to. We don't talk about house. Like, what are you doing? That's why I'm like, bro. I don't know. Sometimes I'm like, whatever. Freedom sweet. But sometimes active players having pods, bro. It is sometimes just a little weird. It's great. I love it. I love all of it. Let him go. <laughs> just for the storyline. I just really want to see him. I just want to be able to say, like, man, we really got someone from the Cowboys. Someone from it. Oh, <laughs> but Byron, you also brought up Jamar Chase 
balling mm-hmm. out that Thursday. And the fact they still lost that game. That's so wild because they wanted to go for two instead of kicking that field goal and possibly going to overtime. And that, that two point conversion play was idiotic. Oh, it was terrible. It was terrible. It was so damn bad. But I, I don't know, man. There, there's some. Uh, I don't know. Byron, you're always to take the points and just play it out because when you don't, that's what happens to you. Yeah. Like, I can see if it was a better two point conversion. Then maybe, like, all right, I can see why you go for it, but it wasn't. Yeah, so I don't know. I, I don't. No, I'm trying to think what losers I have. Because I think I just piggybacked off uh, you guys. And the college football rankings are actually finishing up. All right. New college football playoff rankings. Nothing's really right, changed. Number one, Oregon. Two, okay. Ohio State. Three, Texas. Four, Penn State. Five, Indiana. Six, BYU. Seven, Tennessee. Eight, Notre Dame. Nine, staying up there, Miami. They would drop a spot. Yeah, I think think they were eight last week. So, and then 10, Alabama. 11, Old Miss. 12, Georgia, 13, Boise, and um, 14, SMU, and 15, Texas A&M. Mm. And then due to the bracket, yep. so right now, Ohio State will still play Boise State. Mm-hmm. So go play my – Northern Dame will play Tennessee. Yep. Old Miss would play Penn State. Mm. And Alabama would play uh, Indiana. And uh, or- Miami, Oregon, BYU, and Texas would get the buys right now, mm-hmm. which means right now Georgia is out. Well, you hate to see it, but you hate to see it. it is what it is, man. I mean, there's only so much room in there. There's mm-hmm. only so much room. Which is funny because last week Bama was out and Georgia was in. On this week, Bama's in and Georgia's out. I mean, they change took, by next week. Yeah, they took, <laughs> care of, they took care of business. Like, and then the SEC championship game, depending on what happens with that, that may change some things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. The mean, real story I have is a Miami four with a loss. Still the top of the ACC, still in there. They still think Miami's going to win the ACC. Mm-hmm. Still got Let's see, they got I think they have a bye this week And then they'll play Georgia Tech And then Syracuse No, Georgia Tech They have already played, so they'll play A bye, then Wake Forest And Syracuse Let's see Tom McCoury gonna do it in Miami I mean, their defense I mean, their defense is set up For him to ball out because Miami gives up points. Mm-hmm. Bro, this match would be <laughs> Old Miss and Penn State. Oh my gosh. <laughs> James, the, the, listen, man, don't even try to say, like, James Franklin. Oh Franklin my probably. God. You can't even call him James Franklin of the South no more. You uh, can't call for him this, the, for this he, week. Oh, he, come he, on, bro. You can't call him the sixth <laughs> cast of the South. Like, he might, he might revert week to the South man. path. <laughs> yeah, he might revert back <laughs> this South week. <laughs> But that oh that would be that would be great television. That it would. Yeah, like you said, it could change. It'll change next week. I know Georgia's sitting here like, damn, they gotta beat Tennessee. <laughs> Georgia's probably yeah. sending this like, well, I could see Kirby Smart right now just like sending a text to Carson. I'll just send a screenshot and I send it to Carson back say, This is your fault. <laughs> Bro, like, he's right. thrown nine picks since that post. It's wild, bro. It's so wild. <laughs> it's so wild, bro. And he even yeah. threw a touchdown against Ole Miss. 
I'm just saying, bro. I'm, if I'm Kirby Smart, I'm looking at this man like, this is this. You ready to play now? Like, we don't we don't fuck around enough, right? Like, I sent him a picture of Will Levis at the draft, and said, "This is with his girl. So this could be you next." You think she's gonna sit there? And you a loser? No, she's not. The other twin dates an NFL person. Oh, she date. Um, pull it up. I'm hoping it's someone not like who is like okay and not like a not shit person. Um, okay, look this week. <laughs> I think it's someone weak, which is oh no, <laughs> like weak as in like they young, they're rookie, or weak as in like they actually suck. It was rumored that, I mean, it was um, Jake Ferguson. The tight end? <laughs> the fabulous tight end? <laughs> no, no, he don't give a fuck either. <laughs> How old is he? <laughs> That's a good question. I thought he was up there. He, he, he Shit, Cedric, he might be. All right, don't stop. <laughs> I Listen, I need my naivety. It's no, 1999, he's 25. Mm-hmm. Really? Mm-hmm. Should he be balling yeah. out for a twenty-five-year-old? I did not know he went to Wisconsin. Martin, you, Martin, you can't call him weak. He only twenty-five. He low-key be balling out. I'm jaded now. We got he was a leading receiver for the Cowboys last week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At least he's not going off. His girl's podcast talking shit about the team. Well, no, because he's a mid good Midwestern boy. He understands some things. He's from Wisconsin. I want to. She has to. I can't. She has to be with Carson Beck because she really thought Buddy was going to be the number one pick. Well, I mean, I mean, listen, what's her face was with Will Levis because she thought he was going to get drafted. That well, was drafted well, number. Well, he that was ass. He, that was. So, I mean, she showed up full. Full, full suit. Like, listen here. Yes, sir. Like, I wouldn't be amazed. Honestly, I wouldn't be amazed if it was a plan from the start. She's like, man, I'm trying to get these, these NFL contacts. At the track. <laughs> Bro, I'm just saying, like, you showed up for that to sit next to your dude, and then you break out with him when he ain't getting drafted in the first round. <laughs> yeah, I'm just is. saying, it, look, it just looks, it doesn't look great. Like, it just doesn't look great. Oh, no behavior does, does not like it. Naturally, it could be for other stuff. There could have been some type of thing. Maybe Will Levis was bringing Mayo into the bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect for all I know, there could be some other things going on, but it just don't look cool. Man, shit. With that, with that being said, thank you everyone for listening to the L7C podcast. We'll be back next week. This is the no disrespect to Northwestern. This is the last game that doesn't matter because uh, we know we're going to smoke them. So <laughs> no disrespect. You can't do that to them like that and say no disrespect. <laughs> like... <laughs> they really say, yeah, we better, we better go into uh, yeah, Illinois we... and whoop y'all ass. No disrespect. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. we're going to show up to Wrigley Field, respect the arena, the stadium, all the history there. We got to smoke y'all. shit on y'all. <laughs> yeah, we, I want that game to be over by halftime. We got a top five matchup next week. I'm with you. I'm with you. I have to say, you ain't have to hit it with the... Respectfully, you're going to beat your ass. <laughs> yeah, man. And with that being said, thank you everyone for listening to L7C Podcast. We'll be back next week. Signing out. Thank you for listening to this episode of the L7C Podcast. Be sure to like, rate, review, and subscribe to the channel. Follow us on all social media platforms, and we'll be talking to you guys soon. Take care.